Well, we're getting close to the end of the semester. We have this lecture, one more on scale and proportion that will be coming up. And then I might do another lecture, maybe two lectures. We'll see how, how that works out. But um, we're getting close. So that's good, right? OK. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the principles of design known as rhythm. Before I get into the actual information about rhythm, there's some things that I kind of want to get out of the way first. What is rhythm? Well, the principle of art known as rhythm is difficult to explain. And this is kind of what we're going to get into because it, it isn't as clear cut as color or as any of the other principles that we've talked about. There are some of the principles that are a little bit difficult, but in my opinion, when we talk about rhythm, it's much more subtle. It takes a little bit more understanding of what it is you're looking at to determine where rhythm is in a piece of art. So when you think of music, it is easy to recognize rhythm. In fact, it is almost an innate ability for someone to understand rhythm in music. In some ways, rhythm in art is similar. It takes practice to understand the visual beat of a piece of art. And that's what I'm going to try to explain today, is the visual beat. When we look at things, you need to be able to look at it in such a way as, as maybe a musician looks at a piece of sheet music. In fact, I have a sample of that coming up. So what are the basics of rhythm? Well, we start off with there are two ways that we kind of get rhythm out of a piece of artwork. One of them is a pattern. So a pattern has rhythm, but not all rhythm is patterned. So that's, there's a, a distinction there that, that you need to keep in the back of your mind. If I tell you to do an exercise on create rhythm and you just do a pattern, there is a good possibility that you will not be creating rhythm. Lines can create rhythm by conveying movement. Shapes can create rhythm by how they are placed next to each other. And with practice, we can find a rhythm in the style, technique, brush strokes, colors, and patterns that artists use. In fact, with practice, you will be able to create a rhythm to your art in using some of these techniques. Now, there are other ways to do it besides those. The list pretty much goes on for quite a while. But with practice, you will be able to create interesting artwork if you understand how to create a rhythm in what it is that you're creating. So before I get into what rhythm is, what I want to talk about is the difference between pattern and repetition. Both of these can work together to create rhythm, but they don't necessarily mean there's rhythm if an artwork has these elements in them. So a pattern is usually a repeating artistic element or decorative style, or design, I'm sorry. In my mind, when I think of a pattern, I think of something that, that really, for the most part, isn't supposed to be the focal point. I think of it as a background. It's something that repeats constantly. And once we understand that repeating element, we tend not to spend time on it. Now, that's not necessarily a perfect definition. I'm just saying that the way I view a pattern. A pattern are elements that repeat consistently over um, a composition. Now, repetition is an element in art that is repeated. I could have four of the same photographs of a person, but placed in, a different, in different ways. So that photograph of that person is repeating, but it does not create a pattern.
So now we're going to talk specifically about a pattern. A pattern is a recurring element in a particular arrangement. It may be a motif that repeats itself in wood carvings or a piece of fiber art. Fiber art is um, fabric. It could be a predictable pattern such as a checkerboard or brickwork. Now these, this is the lowest common denominator of what a pattern is. I've got some samples that, that are more sophisticated patterns and this is just to say at the very least a checkerboard and brickwork have patterns have a pattern to them. So here's some ex examples of patterns. This one on the left, in the first example, we see wood that has been created by forming a pattern of shapes. In this case, the shape is a triangle. Now, there are arguments that you could say that there's line, there's all sorts of different ways that we could say that the background, the color, creates the pattern, but I think in general, all of us will say that it's the shape that creates the pattern. Now over here, this is of a tile, and these geometric forms create this pattern. And remember what I was saying about when I, when I visualize, when I think of what a pattern is, I tend to think of things that are not necessarily they don't necessarily have a, an emphasis, a dominance to them, and that's kind of what I'm showing you here. When we look at this, this is just a repeating element that goes all across the composition. Same with this here. Again, that's not an absolute, but it might help you when you think about the difference between a pattern and other things, that a pattern is something that typically doesn't have a focal point. Now, so here's some other patterns. Those first two were on shapes. We had that kind of geometric form, and then in the other one we had uh, triangles. In this, on this one right here, we're working with texture. Now, understand that this is 2D, and we can't really get the texture out of this, but I put it in there because in the real world, if we were to look at it, this texture would be the pattern. It does have elements of line in it, but it's the texture, it's how it sticks up against the background is what we, we would kind of see the pattern. Over here, this is a pattern of line. Do you see where the pattern is here? We have kind of the zigzag line and it repeats all the way across. We also have the pattern of color, the tints how they repeat. I just think that the line is stronger in this than, than the tints themselves. So now repetition. Now we've talked about pattern. Pattern is pretty easy. Checkerboard is a pattern. It's anything that repeats continuously and, and for the most part it repeats over the, the composition. The other part of rhythm is repetition. And to, to put it into simple terms, repetition refers to an element that repeats. I mean, that's kind of a duh statement, but, but it's a little bit more sophisticated than, than just saying that an item repeats. It can be a shape, color, line, or a subject that repeats. It could possibly form a pattern, but it doesn't need to. There's no, uh, repetition can be a pattern like for if we imagine a checkerboard, we have black, white, black, white, black, white squares, right? And that's a pattern. In fact, it was an example that I mentioned in the slide that that is an example of a pattern. And it's the lowest form of pattern, but it is a pattern. But those, those squares repeat, so it does have repetition. I hope that that kind of makes sense because that is the defining line that, that it could possibly form a pattern but it doesn't need to. So now I've got some examples of what repetition is. And these are some, um, I wouldn't say famous, this, the one on the left is famous, this one it was just somebody I found on the internet. Um, 
if you're familiar with uh, Professor uh, Moore's work, it almost looks a little bit like her, her work up here. So if I were to ask you, is this repetition or is this pattern? Some people might say, well, this is pattern. We have squares that are repeating. And yes, that is true, but it isn't technically pattern. It's re repetition. The reason why it's repetition is because we have a shape that is repeating. The pattern would be created if I were to take these nine squares and then put them over here, and then put them over here, and keep that going and maybe drop them down like this, then we would have a pattern of these nine squares. But as it is, this is not the same as this, and this is not the same as this, and this is not the same as that. So this is about repetition and not pattern. The same could be said for this as well. Each one of these kind of creates somewhat of a pattern, but technically it doesn't. What it is is repetition. We have about three things that are going on. We have the slices of pie, that those are very similar, right? We have the plates. And if we move over to here, we have the plates are the same, the pie is not the same, but the pies still look, have the same rough shape. So although this could be considered somewhat of a, of a pattern, very loosely, I'm not suggesting that it is a pattern, it is all about repetition. Now here's some more repetition. The repetition does not have to form a pattern. So for example, just these repeating elements form this repetition. Now like I put up here, I could have shown works that had repetition that did form a pattern, but I decided not to because I want there to be that strong line of understanding that a pattern is different than repetition. These elements are the same, but it's not the same up and down, and they're not exactly the same. These are, are very different, but in our mind, I see legs that are very similar here. I see kind of the hands that are similar here. I see dark forms that are similar here. And in the background, I see forms that are repeating along that same um, X axis. So we have repetition of form here. We have repetition of color. We have repetition of, of uh, shapes in this one. Okay, so now we know what repetition is and we know what pattern is. Now we need to kind of look at what is actual rhythm. Well, like I mentioned earlier, a pattern can create a rhythm. But it doesn't necessarily, just because something is a pattern, doesn't necessarily mean that it has rhythm. A checkerboard does not have rhythm. A repeating item can create rhythm, but just having either a pattern or repetition doesn't automatically mean that there's rhythm. When I try to decipher, when, when I personally try to decipher rhythm in a piece of art, I judge the individual elements and how they relate to the previous element. Now I'm going to get into more detail with this, but when I look at, say, the Marilyn Monroe that I showed, I looked at one of them and I compared it to the, either one on each side. And I looked at those and I saw that the shapes were the same. And then I looked at the next one and that was the similar shape as the one next to it. And we could go on and on and on. Same with the houses. I looked at one house and I saw the, a similar house. It didn't have to be exact, but it was similar to the next one, and to the next one, to the next one. And that's where I saw the repetition. That has rhythm. Just like a song where each note relies on the note preceding it, rhythm in art relies on the elements around it. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm going to talk about. I think it's the next slide. Is Well, I'll just move to the next slide. All right, so when we talk about music, 
it's easy to figure out what rhythm is, isn't it? I mean, everybody has their songs that they like the rhythm. And when we use that word, we throw it around quite a bit. So we understand music. We don't necessarily understand the music like, like maybe a musician understands it, but we have enough experience with it to, to kind of understand what rhythm is in music. If an artist or a musician were to look at this, they could see the rhythm. In their mind, they're going to translate this, and they could, they could kind of feel how it moves up and down. As an artist, we can look at the form of the notes and how the individual note relates to the notes before and after it. So this is what I was kind of talking about before. I'm going to look at this note. Now, if I look at this note, Slightly higher than it is another note. Slightly lower than it is another note. And then almost a little bit lower than that is the next note. And then when we move over, it goes down, goes up, up higher. And we can get this kind of rhythm based on the individual notes and where they are in relationship to the notes around it. We could, you know, this, this music, I don't know if it's the, the, the perfect choice because I just grabbed it. But if you were to kind of follow this, you could see the rhythm, or you could feel it in your body almost. And that's kind of what I put here. You can almost feel the music by looking how the, how the notes rise and fall. Now, in theory, we can't because they mean something different than just how high they are on the, on the, the uh, graph here. But we can kind of get this feeling of where the rhythm is. Now, like I was mentioning, a musician musician will look at this and understand the rhythm. It's a more literal rhythm, but as an artist, we can get a rhythm from these, these notes. So I've talked about a little bit what rhythm is. And I, I, when I was doing the, the keynote presentation, I thought, well, is there any chance that a, a composition could not have rhythm in it? And so I searched around and I found this right here. This is a photograph of an office. And if you look at this example and try to find a repeating element or pattern, because that's what we're looking for when it comes to rhythm, is either a repeating element or a pattern, you see similar shapes and elements. I've got a square here. I've got this kind of rectangle. I've got actually two rectangles. We have a rectangle here, rectangle here. We've, we've got shapes around that are similar. We've got two uh, air ducts up at the top. So you do see similar shapes and elements, but there really isn't anything that flows from one element to the other. If I were to look at this and then compare that to this, the, it's too much. It's too big. It doesn't. This doesn't flow into this. This is an individual item, and this is an individual item. And then if we look to the next one, it's small, and it's not the same. If, it, if this was a full rectangle and slightly larger, we could say, yeah, this flows into that. But there isn't really anything that flows into the next item. Somebody could probably nitpick this and say, well, if we look here, 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 and here, there is kind of some rhythm there. But I would argue they, they are so far in the back, we don't, you probably didn't even notice them when you're first looking. The emphasis is not on, on these, it's, the emphasis is on the larger items. Okay, so now when we look at art, I want to kind of go over this. I've chosen quite a few, I think there's roughly nine or ten images that I kind of want to go over and see if we can find the, the rhythm in these pieces. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break, um, break it down by pattern and repetition. This first image, we have repetition of shapes or a pattern of shapes, right? There are these little circles, it's kind of like pointillism in a way. And we don't really have kind of a, a pattern of color. The repetition of color isn't that strong, but we have it of the shapes, of the texture as well. 
probably texture would be a better way to describe this. So there is a rhythm. The colors are similar. If I look at this color and then move over to that, it's similar, and we move this way. If I come up here, yes, uh, not so much, but I kind of get it that it's. And there is kind of a rhythm to this, but it's not very strong. At least not in my opinion. There's repetition, but not a lot of rhythm. When I look at this, I don't feel like there's movement, not movement in the, the artistic sense, but movement as in like music notes in this. Now what about this one here? Now I look at this and I definitely see rhythm. I see rhythm in color, I see rhythm in shape. I don't, I see repeating pattern, or repeating elements. We have the characters up at the top, we have the characters down at the bottom. And because one leads into the next one, leads into the next one, and leads into the next one, there's kind of this kind of flow that's happening. And there's a rhythm that, that we're getting. There's other elements that come into play when we look at these as well the way they're facing. Um, the ones in the back are facing forward. The ones, well, I guess they're all facing forward. Um, the way the, the feet are, are angled. There's all sorts of things that kind of get this sense of, of movement, almost like a music, the music notes that I showed. Looking up here, same basic thing. Here we have uh, lines that are creating this repetition. It's not a pattern, it's just repetition. And then the colors work along with it as well. Can you, I mean, it, the actual graphic, the artwork, kind of has a flow to it. But can you kind of see that if we look, the green kind of morphs into the red, and then morphs back into the green, and then it goes into the orange. And it, there's just kind of this flow that, that you can kind of get a sense of. Hopefully you can see it, but um, over time I think that you'll be able to see it much better. The colors kind of all work together and give us this, this smooth kind of flow that we need to understand rhythm. So now some more, this is more famous works. Starry Night, Van Gogh, kind of like the field that I just showed, that I just talked about. We have now color and movement, and there's all sorts of things going on. And as an individual, I think, I think the average person would say that, that you feel kind of this flow, this movement of the piece that's kind of just letting us follow it wherever the artist wants us to go. And if you were to break that down further, that flow is kind of created by a sense of rhythm. It's probably three types of rhythm that are coming across. First is the color. The colors are close enough that we tend to, I don't know, I would say follow the color. And then we have a sense of texture as well that texture kind of creates this, this repetition. Notice how these lines here are similar to these here, here. The brush strokes are all coming across this as kind of a repeating, I don't want to say pattern, but almost similar to a pattern. Now Jackson Pollock, do you, do you get a sense of rhythm in this? I would definitely say it's there. The lines inside that you look in further, further in, you do get a sense that there's movement in this. Now, I put Jackson Pollock in because Jackson Pollock is usually used by somebody who doesn't understand art and says, it's really easy to do. I mean, I could just drip paint over a canvas and sell it for a million dollars. In fact, I think my brother said that to me. This is what he was referring to. But as an artist, you should be able to look at it and see that it's not as easy as just dripping, 
paint, the placement of the colors, the white, and how if we were just to look at the white, we get a sense that there's movement going on, that there's a rhythm, that he put the white there for a purpose. Now maybe he didn't know what that purpose was, maybe he was just following his instincts, but in the end, we do get this almost musical type of movement in this piece. This one right here is Degas, and this one is a little bit easier to see rhythm. If I were to look at this, I could follow the shapes, and they kind of have this, this rhythm to them. We're following the colors. Each one is similar to the next one to the next one, and it's almost a line that, that has movement and a sense of rhythm. Now here are some other famous people. Um, has anybody ever heard of Bouguereau? He was very famous in his time, and then went and he kind of grew out of a favor from artists. He was considered to be not a true artist because he was still painting kind of um, realistic, emotionally charged. I guess that's the way, more kitschy type of work. But his talent was very strong, and, and for a while he was famous, and he, uh, a typical artist would reject his work in favor of more of a kind of impressionist style. So going by what I said about rhythm, I get a sense of rhythm here that's just kind of moving around. Notice how the way he has designed this, this painting is that our eyes kind of follow this. And by following it, we kind of get a sense of, of movement. And there's kind of this going back and forth, this kind of sway that's happening. And eventually, we end up here on that, that character. Now, to talk more about, say, last week's, this is an example of framing for emphasis. Piet Mondrian. Now, this, his work, most people know uh, Mondrian as his squares that were that he used uh, the primary colors to fill in certain blocks. But he, he was breaking things down by, by facets earlier. And he had done a lot of work similar to this. Eventually, he distilled that down to those, the, the pattern. This is an example of pattern creating a, a rhythm. Because these shapes are starting to, they're pretty much very similar, even though they're different sizes. And there is a rhythm that's happening here. It's not as strong as some other pieces, but if we were to compare the different elements next to each other, it's not repetition because these individual elements are not the same, but what is same is the line work. So there is some repetition, but very little. It's more based on pattern. Down here, Michelangelo, the spark of life or the birth of Adam depending on who you talk to, definite a rhythm. The, the texture that Michelangelo uses, the placement of the figures, there's a sense of rhythm that is going through this piece. If we were to focus in just on the hands, you would see that the hands are very similar. There's no, there's no mistaking this sense of movement and rhythm in here. Now, Rene Magritte, he was a surrealist, and many people are, are aware of his work when it came to the umbrellas. This was another piece of his. I'm a big fan of Magritte. This is an example of, I would say, pattern. I mean, and I'm drawing kind of a fine line there. Because of the pattern, we get the sense that there is movement up and down. We kind of don't really get it so much down here, but if we look at these different elements, they're not exact, so it's not a full pattern. But 
I would I would hypothesize that this is more pattern than repetition. But then repetition kind of fits into it. I don't get a big sense of rhythm in this. There is some, but not as strong as, say, uh, Michelangelo's. It is very interesting, though. When we come down here, and uh, this is Paul Clay. Another, I'm another, he's, I'm a big fan of his as well. Paul Clay is working with color here and shapes. It isn't a pattern because there is nothing that's similar. There is a sense of, of rhythm with the color of the placement of the objects. You can almost feel this, this sense of movement. This red balloon that's in, in the center kind of adds to the overall aesthetic, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's part of the rhythm. I think it's these shapes right here and the way he's uh, composed the composition that gives it the rhythm. Okay, so that's it. I don't know how long this has turned out to be. I want, there's a couple things that I want to make sure that everybody understands. The first is, is rhythm is not easy to figure out in art. There was a couple of those that I was, I was talking about and I was like, I'm not really seeing the rhythm that I wanted to, to be able to show you. Unlike some of the other principles that we've talked about, rhythm takes a lot of experience and you have to look for it. It doesn't necessarily pop out to you. If we talk about emphasis, emphasis is really simple. You look at something and what stands out. You just have to describe what it is that's standing out. But when we talk about rhythm, you have to look at it and find the rhythm, which isn't necessarily as easy as seeing the emphasis. I hope that made sense. Um, I'm not sure if, if I need to go into it in more depth or not, but please let me know if I've confused you, if you kind of understand what I'm saying, or you get it. It makes sense. All right? Thank you. I will talk to you on Tuesday.